Hello everyone, this is Daniel, your host of the Mirror Sphere. Welcome back. Thank you for coming. Um, today, I wanted to cover Mandalorian um, Season 2, I think it's Episode 6. Yes, Episode 6. Oh, by the way, right there is my poster. It is the poster you can find on my Teespring store. One of the posters you can find on my TC, uh, Teespring store. Um, I had it signed and I framed it. And... It's going to be later. I'm going to move it over here. But yeah, so that's just one of the items you can find on my Teespring store. Um, if you go to the about section in my, um, my, my YouTube channel, you can find um, links to all of my stuff, all my other websites from uh, my Twitter, my parlor, uh, geeksandgamers.com. I have, a, I have the, the three, uh, first three chapters of my book. Uh, fully edited and a, kind of like a preview if you want to read my book. This is Arthas Arkwright, the main character of my book that you'll get to know and grow with during the first book. And more characters to come. I plan on getting a whole lot of characters created by the artist and get it out there for everyone. Anyways, um, how did I feel with this episode right at the bat? I don't want to... This won't be the spoiler section, and I'll tell you when I start spoiling it. Uh, because this is a spoil review, so if you don't want to be spoiled, then when I say, hey, it's time for spoilers, then please have a good good day. Anyways, uh, what do I feel about it? It was all right. It's just another, it's another episode where you can tell Mando, the, the supposedly the main character, doesn't really have much charisma. And he definitely needs other um, actors and stuff to come in and make him look better, kind of. Uh, he's definitely kind of a side character in this season. You guys haven't noticed a lot in this season, the second season. The first season was all about Mando and the child. He had a couple guest stars, and but he still... People like Mando for being Mando, and they enjoyed his character for the most part. This season... It's not really about him, or it's about the child more than anything, and it's about all the other characters that join in his little parade. And he's kind of falling more and more back to a backseat kind of role where he kind of shows up one, maybe two attacks, doing the whole thing, but you really see how badass the other characters are because they have some like crazy action scene with the other characters. Um, it's happened in like almost every episode. This episode is no different. Um, I, I thought it was pretty good, though. For that, is the like the only thing I had problems with, for the most part. Um, I still would give this episode a six out of ten. Uh, so yeah, it was it was pretty decent. Um, the the music is still kind of off for Star Wars, but it's not terrible. Um, the action scenes are really cool. It looks beautiful. They have this, uh, if you guys don't know, they go to Tython in this episode. I'm not going to spoil anything for you guys. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. And for, it's called The Tragedy. And if you, it's already, you know, it's going to happen. So, yeah. Uh, now I'm going to get into spoilers because I do want to actually review this show bit by bit. Um, I was trying to do this on orbs, or uh, stream labs orbs, but I cannot figure that out. I gotta talk with some friends and try to figure out how to do customize it stuff. But, uh, yeah, um, so the show, spoiler review, right now, spoilers. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Please like and share this video if you have, haven't. Um, it really helps out the channel. Please subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. And it helps my channel build and keep building and building. And that's all I want to do is keep building up. So if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell. Hit some likes. Smash those likes. And I'll see you next time. For those who are staying around for the spoilers, it is time for spoilers. Yeah, so last episode, Sona Tonko, Tonko, Tonk, whatever, um, Sona told him to take the child to Tython where a seeing stone is. It's like a, an area where uh, ruins of a temple used to be. And if he sit him on this stone, if he uses the force, 
he decide, can decide if he wants to look for a teacher or not. Um, it pretty much is going to make him a beacon for other Jedi, other Force-sensitive beings. And they'll be able to track him through the Force and come and want to be his teacher. Um, so, in this episode, Mando gets a Tython. You see him on the ship. And he's making this like little joke thing with the child. And he's like, you know, great, you know, child, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're on Tython. You know, when you find a teacher, you know, and he takes a ball from, I think he asks the child for the ball. He grabs the ball, he puts it up, and he goes, come on, child, come on. And he's kind of making jokes about his name. He's like, hey, Gugu, or Co Ugh, what is it? Car Cargu? Cargu? Fuck it, I can't remember. I can't. I don't like the fucking name. I really don't. <laughs> Grogu. Sorry. It's Grogu. I don't like that name. No one's going to remember this name. It's going to take forever people to stop calling Baby Yoda or the child. Anyway, it's Grogu. He keeps saying, hey, Grogu. The child goes, huh? Like, huh? You said my name. He's like, ah. He's like, hey, give me the ball. And he has him force pull the ball. And then he goes, yeah. And the child thinks he's yelling at him. So he's like, yeah. He's like, oh, I'm not yelling. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. He's like, hey, when we get here, he says, I'm glad you've been trained. Blah, blah, blah. He tells the kid that he can't train him. He says, I can't train you. You're too powerful. I don't understand this stuff. So you can't stay with me. So Mando finally gets a tights on. You see him circling both ba or <laughs> baby, uh, Grogu. I'm never going to get this name. Grogu. But you can you can see he can see out the window too. They're both looking at, at the ruins and they're circling it. And Mando says, you know, I can't um, I can't sit down there. So we're gonna have to fly the rest of the way. So he sits down somewhere and flies with his jetpack to the thing. Which is freaking, it's so much better than running back up and down the hill. I would, you know. So he flies, he lands. Um, he's looking around. He sets it. He goes, I guess that's the stone. So he's like, I guess I just sit you here. And he says, all I had to do is get you here and you would do the rest. And so he's walking around the stone trying to look for like some activation device. He's like, I don't get this. Uh, Baby Yoda's sitting there like, do, 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 do. And he's like, okay, well, um, and then he sees Boba Fett's ship. The, God, I can't ever remember the name of this, um, the ship. If you remember the ship, I apologize can't for some reason i can't think of it right this second my brain just fucking just quit on me so you see his ship flying down and but you know he runs over and he goes oh shit we gotta go he turns around and baby yo has activated the fucking stone so he's sitting there meditating fucking this big ass force is going on bing shooting into the sky and baby Yoda's just sitting there meditating or some kind of trance um so you know, he tries to reach a child, he can't, because there's like a force field, like the force is so strong, it's like a, a repelling force field. So he tries to reach, and he gets knocked back. And so he goes, damn it. And so he's like, I'll protect you. Takes out his blaster and starts running down the hill. And he's getting around this rock, and a bunch of blaster fire comes at him. So he dies behind the rock. Um, Boba Fett finally makes his appearance at this point. So, you know, just sit back a little bit. Boba Fett finally makes his appearance. Um, he steps out of the shot, out of the stuff. He's got his rifle on his back. He's got this, like, weird weapon that I think is a sand per people weapon. And he's in this big cloak. Man, I was like, are you a Jedi? I was like, oh, my God. I was like, no, you're not a fucking Jedi. Do you not recognize the ship? Like, you're a bounty hunter. Every bounty hunter should recognize Boba Fett's ship. Everybody does. And so he's like, no, I'm here for my armor. And Boba Fett goes, or not Boba Fett, I'm sorry. Mandy goes, what? He's like, my name is Boba Fett. And I'm here for the armor that you, I have been tracking you and I want my armor. And he's like, that, are you Mandalorian? He says, no, but is my armor. He says, he's just a simple man living a simple life. And he says, well, it belongs to the Mandalorians, not to you. It is Beskar. 
it's not a creed, a creed that Beskar armor only goes in the hands of a Mandalorian. Um, the guy says, you know, I will make a deal with you. I will help protect you and the child if you give me my armor back. And he says, well, no, it's not yours. And they had this like, kind of argument. And he says, why don't I just, I'll just, I'll just kill you right here? And he says, well, I have a sharpshooter. I have a partner who's a sharpshooter. And she's got you trained in her sights. He's like, well, I got a Vesco armor. So as soon as I see the flash of a rifle, I'll know where she's at. And I'll kill you both. And he's like, well, he's not pointing at you. They're pointing at your companion. He's like, oh, shit. Okay. Well, what are you... And he's like, put down... For some reason, he says, we'll lower our weapons and you'll put down your jetpack. Why does Mando need to put down a jetpack? I know he's got a missile on it, but... You're too close for the missile. Like, he's literally, like, a couple feet away. If he shot, shot a missile at you, he would, like, blow himself up. So, whatever. So Mando says, fine. So, because he pulls out his little thingies with his fucking, you know, his best guard fucking, uh, what do you call it, honey bird, honey, honeybees or hummingbirds, I think they were. And he pulls that out and the guy's like, okay, okay, settle down, we'll just have a chat. Because he knows he just has to fire that and everybody dies. <laughs> so, he goes, okay, fine, whatever, we'll have a chat. So he actually agrees. He puts his weapon away. They all put their weapons down. The sharpshooter gets off. The thing comes down. Is a chick from the previous episode, the Asian girl. I can't think of her name right now, the actress either. Um, she's like, hey, I'm still alive, thanks to him. She like reveals like her stomach, and she's got like a bunch of fucking mechanical shit in her stomach. She's like, he saved my life. Now I owe him. Now I follow him. He says, oh, okay. And so uh, they start having this discussion, and he says, well, that armor only belongs to a Mandalorian. I am going to return it to the Mandalorians. And he says, that armor was given to my father by your forefathers. It belongs to him, and he passed it down to me. So it belongs to me. As you know that they showed in late, late last season that they actually um, commented on Boba Fett, I believe, and they... Actually called Boba Fett. I know this is in Clone Wars, actually, where they actually mentioned Boba Fett as a, or no, Jango Fett, where the Mandalorians actually claim that Jango Fett stole the armor, that he was not given the armor. So in this show, he they say no, that actually Jango Fett was a foundling and was given the armor and earned the armor that way. So he says, okay, um, if that's true, then you, it does belong to you. And then all of a sudden you see a new ship appears. I thought it was another bounty hunter ship because I've never seen these ships before. These are not the Imperial Star, you know, drop ships that they had in like Clone Wars and other shit. This is a whatever new ship, I guess they designed to help sell. <laughs> so one lands. This is a bit, the other part I had a problem with. It lands at the very bottom by all their ships. And everybody, all of a sudden, all these troops run out. Boom, 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 boom. And he's like, hey, 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 I gotta get the child. And they, the other two go, okay, we'll defend, we'll protect you, go get the kid. And so they turn around, and the sharpshooter and, and both feds are taking out the troops. And the whole time, Mando runs up the hill, they're fucking killing these troops, like fucking left and right. The sharpshooter chick from the last episode just bam, 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 just knocking people out. Just fucking, there's a sniper and they're sitting in the open. He's fucking, this is the only, another problem I have with this show is how badly they treat the stormtroopers. Like they make these two troopers absolute idiots. No, there's no leadership. They kind of has a deal with the one of the red things. He's supposed to be like the team leader, squad leader. And he's kind of like, just go, just go. And they're like, but dude, he's got a fucking sniper. There's no way up there. So he's just like, shut up and run. And it's like, what? And they're literally just sitting in an open field. There's a giant hill with all these rocks. And instead of like making coordinated movements, well, you know, suppression fire. I'm sorry, I'm a Marine. I have combat experience. You know, there's 
even if you're in open field, there's ways to do it where you bound to help you get less and less fire upon you. You get up, you run, you drop to the ground as hard as you can, and you keep firing as much as possible. So the guys behind you can get up further. And then you do the same. It's called bounding. That's what happens if you're in an open field. This guy just fucking just throws all his troopers just running in a giant crowd, just getting fucking taken out one at a time. What the fuck? And they're not taking cover, like, at all. Finally, they they have a guy come out with a fucking artillery who can't still can't hit shit. So he's fucking firing artillery rounds by himself. The Marine in me is like, if you guys don't know artillery units, I worked with artillery unit at one point in my time. And we have Arties. Arties work in teams at least two to three. You have one guy who adjusts the aim. You have another guy who spots. So he's listening to radio or listening to the commands. Patting the guy on the back, letting him know how what to adjust in case he didn't hear it. Then you got a third guy whose only job is to fucking load this shit. That's how this works. That way you always have more than one person making sure the rounds are hitting where they need to fucking hit. Literally, they have one dude just like, ba-bam! Oh, I missed. Ba-bam! Oh, I missed again. Ba-bam! I missed again. Oh, ba-bam! I loosened this giant fucking rock, which the fucking chick kicks down. Fucking rolls, crushes half the dudes. They bring out this Gatling gun. And they're like, because we can't fucking aim and we can't shoot, hit. If you can't aim, you use a machine gun. So it's just, you know, the same machine gun that they took out during that, um, was it season one when they were inside the bar? And he's like lighting up the whole fucking room. They're on the ground going, oh my God. It was the same kind of weapon. So they fucking bring this thing on. It's like, fucking chicks just running. Literally just running across the pass, lighting, and then she drops down behind these rocks and it's like <sighs> seriously and literally the dude is still firing a fucking machine gun while the rock is fucking coming at him like you see troopers running and get squished and he's like ah! <laughs> blows up I'm like get out of the way <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ how did you guys ever rule the galaxy in the first place if you're this fucking retarded I get it, they're supposed to say that the Empire doesn't really give a shit about its regular troops, that they're kind of just cannon fodder, whatever. Um, if you guys haven't read the Thrawn series, that's pretty good books. Thrawn understands that he doesn't, especially in this point in the Star Wars, where the Empire doesn't have resources like he used to. They don't have the men power. They don't have like unlimited resources like they used to when they were running the galaxy. So you need to have every man that you can save. Thrawn in the stories actually respected that. You know, he said, Grand Admiral Thrawn, which this is why he was such a bad dude, is because he was actually smart. And he sat down and he made sure people didn't die if they didn't need to. Sorry, my keyboard's right there. I didn't realize that. So, uh, Mando continues his... Uh, Mando, by the way, the whole time that this is happening, Mando's up the hill. He's trying to get to the child. And then he gets thrown back really hard and goes unconscious. So Mando's fucking knocked out. Baby Yoda's still in the trance. And these two are down there fighting. Around. Well, by the way, Boba Fett is sneaking around like a fucking, like a soaker kind of did. But he's got this weird, like, staff thing with, like, a blunt object with a spike at the one end and a spike at another. So he's fucking just crushing fucking helmets. You can see him crack and shatter. Fucking the Empire's armor is fucking shit. Absolute trash. My fucking Kevlar shit can do stand better shit than the fucking this advanced armor sets. So you got um, him just fucking kicking people's ass. Finally, he gets down to where the uh, my guess is the team leaders or the squad leader, whatever, and he hits him, knocks him out, down. Fucking turns around, bashes another trooper down. Turns around and fucking just stabs. His, the looks over, Mando's ship is there. So he runs real quick down to the ship, fucking gets his armor. Meanwhile, sniper checks fucking still killing people. Another ship lands right next to the first one. Big, this is what I have a problem with. Um, if you, I was watching some other guys' reviews, and I totally agree. I saw this also. There's a giant hill. Big hill. 
The person you want is on top. You're attacking from this direction already. Why not line troops on this side and attack from that direction? That way they can come up the hill and then attack from behind or on the other side or the other side. You have entire circle you can take of this big ass hill. No, they land bullet troopers right next to each other. A bit, you know, Boba Fett gets his armor on. Mando finally fucking wakes up. Goes, okay, child, I can't get to you. I'm just going to fucking go back and make sure I keep you protected. Fucking, that was like foretelling worse shit. <laughs> and, by the way, he still doesn't have his jetpack on. So he fucking runs down the hill. Uh, and ends up being Sniper Chick's literal cover. Because he gets back to back with the, the Sniper Chick. You know, fucking dudes are pouring down from the second transport. They're, too, they're outnumbered. They're fucking just taking out dudes. How many fucking dudes are in that transport? Because it looked like there was like eight. And she's killed like 30. <laughs> and now he gets there and there's like 20 more. I'm like, what the fuck? And why aren't they just coming out at once? Like one squad go that way. One squad go this way. One squad go that way. So you have guys out, you know, spreading out and going up the hill in different directions, making it a lot harder to defend. Instead, there's like... One squad run up, oh, y'all got killed. Another squad run up, oh, y'all got killed. Another squad run up, y'all got killed. It's like, what the f- uh... Anyways. Oh, fucking stupid. But, whatever. We get it. They're a joke. They're supposed to be like this comedy relief fucking stupid shit. Excuse me. A drink for the work of man, by the way. Some Dr. Pepper. Um, so, literally, Mando is using his best car armor now. I don't know why this guy ever takes cover because he's getting shot like 50 times and he's just like, ding, 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 bam, bam, ding, 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 bam. Fucking uses his little hummingbirds to take out a bunch of them. Uh, she's behind him. She's like, crying behind him. They're coming out, fucking pop shouting people. So she's literally using, Mando is now Sniper Chick's cover. He's like a shield. Just and he's getting shot like fucking crazy. He's like, do, 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 I was like, how much can that armor withstand? Because, I'm sorry, uh, Mandalorian armor is great, but it can't take that much fucking hits before it starts breaking down. Um, so... <laughs> Fucking all of a sudden, Boba Fett shows up, fully armored, fucking just lands. He's got a fucking laser thing on his wrist. We fucking taking everybody out. Fucking outshining Mando like he's a little bitch. Fucking just killing everyone. And all of a sudden, the troopers like, oh shit, and they fucking run. They all fucking run. They're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Get back to the ship. Fucking they take off. I'm like. If the Imperials don't care about the troopers, why are they allowing them to run? You think they get like a message or a thing where he's like, where are you going? Sir, we're out, we're on guns. Get back there, I'll fucking blow you up. Oh shit, no. Fucking Boba Fett does that for them. They're literally flying like right here. Instead of like spreading out to make sure, you know, doing some kind of, you know, I don't know, maneuvers to make sure they can't get blown up from the sky. Now yeah, Buffett Fett knocks his little fucking thing down, goes beep, locks onto the top one, or the bottom one really, fires, but it hits the top one. The ship crashes into the other ship, fucking they crumble to the ground, explode, everybody fucking, they all die. I don't, <laughs> uh, uh, see this is, I get it, it's supposed to be very simple, don't think, just a consume kind of products, and uh so anyways, um, then you see back on the, on the thing, all of a sudden a laser beam comes out of fucking nowhere. Just big ass bolt. Shroom, hits Mando's ship, fucking decimates it. Just gone. Literally nothing left. I'm like, later on you're going to see, well, there's like fucking nothing left. And it's like, oh fuck. <laughs> Mando's standing there like, my ship. <laughs> fuck. I just had it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god this is, yeah so you go back to wherever it's going on now uh, uh, 
Marth, Marth Gideon, whatever. Uh, Marth Gideon, I think is his name. Turns around, stomps off. He goes, are they ready? And they're like, yes, sir. Temporarily ready, sir. So they launched the Dark Troopers. I, was, I thought it was a ship at first, like a launch pod. But no, literally, these are black robot assassin looking droids with jetpacks. So they're flying in like Mandos. Fucking, they just fucking, they land and like a four, four of them just fucking come down all creepily. Baby Yoda is falling, at this point, passed out. Because it used all its force stuff and it went to sleep. So it just lands. I thought there would going to be like this cool battle scene between the droids and the, the Mando and Boba Fett. But no, they were literally just like, scan, grab, fly off. <laughs> By the way, Mando still doesn't have his fucking jetpack on for some fucking reason. So he's running back up the hill. I got, eh, eh. Finally gets up there, they're already fucking gone. Like, and he's like, oh shit, fucking Boba Fett's following him. Like, I got a target. I'll fucking take care of it. And Mando's like, wait, don't, you hurt the child. Stand down. So he's like, okay, fine. I'll just, I'll go back at a distance and I'll follow him up. Which is another problem I have with this show, episode. Is you have a giant Star Destroyer up in the sky who just took out your fucking ship. You went to get your ship so they didn't blow it up. But they can't attack it while it's in the sky. You think they'd be fucking shooting lasers down at it. So, he, you know. But no, he just follows them up. He sees this giant star, you know, fucking killer. Uh, what they call it? A mini, uh, I don't know, mini cruiser. Yeah, mini cruiser. Mini starship cruiser. And so the, the, the things get on board and it takes off. Fucking straight up light speed. In the atmosphere. If you guys don't realize, in Star Wars, they explain that you can't go to light speed in the atmosphere because you'll burn up the atmosphere. You'll cause God's amount of damage upon the planet. So no one ever goes to light speed while they're in atmosphere. Usually they take off, they get outside the atmosphere, they get clear of the planet. They okay their light speed and they take off. No, this one is like, no effect. It didn't even fucking attack Boba Fett's ship whatsoever. Like he literally was like, eh, flying around the, the cruiser and they didn't do anything to him. Um, do you have a scene where Boba Fett comes back and he's like, well, he's he fucking, Mando's in his wreckage of his, well, his completely obliterated ship. This is the part where it's like the ship's gone. There's a fucking crater. There's like pieces, little tiny pieces. I'm like, that's it? You blew up a starship, his starship, and there's like nothing left. It just vaporized everything but the Beskar spear. He pulls up the Beskar spear and the ball the kid plays with. I guess it's supposed to touch your feely. But he's like, oh, look, the ball survived. Oh, look, my spear. <laughs> So we get it, the spear is going to be used to, from Mando to use it against Moth Gideon, and probably the next episode, or if not the episode after, to face the Dark Saber. Um, so yeah, it was like, okay. Meanwhile, on the ship, Moth Gideon, it's, you can see it's been in light speed for a while now, so he finally turns, he goes, all right, you contact, as soon as we're out of light speed, Contact fucking the doc and let him know we have our our person. He's got the child. He starts walking and all and he's got his little fucking dudes following him, some troopers following him. He goes to a prison where you got baby your force choking bitches. Yeah, see I like this part where he's kinda like fucking just throwing the fucking troopers around. Of course they're fucking idiots. They're not like, get the fuck out and leave the child in there by himself. No. They're in there supposed to guard him and he's fucking just Throwing one to a wall, force choking one, fucking just knocking the other one around, and then finally he knocks them both together, and throws them into a wall. They're unconscious, but he's tired out, so he's like, "Ugh." Muskegon smiles and he walks forward, and he's like, "It's impressive. You're getting good at that, but it makes you so tired." Yeah. Yeah, see, this is a problem I have with Moth Gideon. He's like the run of the mill shitty bad guy. You know, the little mustache, you know, handlebar mustache. And he's like, yeah, see, I'm the bad guy. Yeah, it's literally what he is. He's, and it's like we know that he's not the big bad guy. 
because they just man, they freaking name drop Grand Admiral Thrawn, and if Grand Admiral Thrawn's name's thrown in there, I don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. I do, I do am worried that they're gonna attach this to the sequel trilogy. Also, but if they don't, let me get this straight. If they go, hey. That's a different time period. Sequel trilogy didn't happen in this time period. We're actually building up to the EU novels, to Grand Admiral Thrawn's dark, you know, the, the Thrawn trilogy. That would be fucking great. That would be awesome. Thrawn was a great bad guy in the EU. Dude was smart, devious. <clears throat> There's a reason he became the emperor, one of the emperor's most trusted advisors. Even though he was an alien. As we don't know, the Empire hated aliens. They were very kind of racist against other aliens. That's why most of them were human. And they're very human-only Empire. And the Sith are very humanistic, racist race. Um, if you don't know about the Sith Empire from the, the Old Republic, the Sith were a red race of aliens that had tentacles that grew out of their face. And they're very dark side influenced race. Humans usually weren't as in the Sith Empire, the Sith were on top. The humans were next. And sometimes equal. It mattered on how powerful they were in the dark side and if they became an actual like dark emperor. So they're on equal footing, almost. Almost. The new empire, humans rule, aliens are all bad. So, yeah, but Grand Admiral Thrawn was so smart, so tactically a genius that he almost never lost until Rebels. But in the, in the EU, they have him just as, he's really smart, he's devious, he, he understands different tactics, he understands when we're winning and when we're losing, when to pull out, when not to where to hit people, how to, <clears throat> he actually goes to a world, hex up this uh, mercenary to get them to get these uh, special animals that can block force users or people from using the force because he knows that Luke Skywalker is a Jedi and that he needs to make sure he protects himself against the Jedi. So that's how smart Thrawn was. And he was very, very smart and very devious. And he would make a great bad guy. So I hope they're going to do something interesting with him in this show. I don't know if they're going to do it in this show. They might might end it. I don't know if they're going to have a third season or not right now. I don't know where Star Wars is going with this show. I figured what was going to happen was that Asona was going to talk, uh, was going to take the child or Gugur, Grogu, Grogu. And he, she was going to go off and they were going to have their own show. It was her, the child, being trained, facing, you know, whatever. And, but it didn't end up that way. And I thought the Mando was going to go off with Boba Fett and his buddies and do bounty hunting crap. And so we were just going to get episodes where, you know, he became like a main bounty hunter or something, the sheriff or something. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't know what they're good because I know they're trying to do like a western. So I'm trying to think of what would a bounty hunter do in the western, but like go to different worlds and help out. <coughs> but yeah, so I guess it still could. Well, I don't think it's going to go there. I don't know who's going to come. They. Could, I wonder if they're going to bring on Ezra because if you don't know in Rebels, um, it ended. Spoilers for Rebels. If you haven't seen Rebels, go do so. It's a decent show. The end of Rebels. Ezra, or Ezra, is a new Jedi who was trained by another Jedi during the Clone War time, like right before, right when the Empire started. Um, he, in the show, him and Grand uh, Admiral Thrawn were on a ship. Uh, Ezra has a very powerful connection to animals through the Force, so he summons these giant space whales, and the space whales capture this giant uh, trip, and then they take him into the into light speed because these whales can like jump into light speed and they're gone. The windows are broken too in the ship. So they're going through light space 
with you know giant windows shattered so they would be exposed to thing it's pretty it's kind of like a sacrifice but during the end you have ahsoka and well, i can't remember her name but there there's a mandalorian chick in the show that likes to paint and her and ahsoka are going off to go find ezra that's their whole thing is they want to track down ezra they name dropped grand admiral thrawn so Grand Admiral Thrawn is supposed to be still alive in this set of universes because well, everybody thought he was dead. They killed him off in Rebels. Everybody was kind of pissed that they killed him off in Rebels because that also threw away the EU. But if he's still alive, somehow survived, if Ezra is still alive too, I wonder if they're going to put in Ezra as a Jedi who finds Grogu. Because I have highly doubt they're going to put Luke Skywalker into this. So, I don't know. They could do Ezra. I thought Ahsoka was going to do it, but no. Um, other than that, I don't really know what Jedis could be out there. Or they may make a whole new one. Maybe another Jedi was hiding out this whole time. Um, felt Grogu. And it came to him. Or maybe it will be one of his own kind. Maybe it will be like a Yoda species who's already a Jedi who's hiding. Um, if this wasn't after, if they, if they did this show during when the Imperials were still here and were, were Yoda was still alive, that would be kind of cool. Because then they could have brought in where like the Rebels are really taking on the Empire right now. So they're really struggling. And then maybe or Yoda could have shown up and be like, oh, no, Grogu. I tried to hide you out and then take him back to, but I don't know. Sorry about that, guys. My stupid phone decided it didn't want to go any further. Uh, so I don't know where the show is going. Sorry, about it. it looks like I did a big cut. I did because my literally my video went, and I had to re make a whole not a whole another video, but I'll attach this video to that one, so you'll see like a little where it kind of ends and then it continues. Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to do with this show. It's very interesting. Um, now do I like it? As long as they don't attach it to the new shit, the trilogy. As long as they don't put it there. I have a feeling they're going to. And as soon as they do, it's going to ruin it. <coughs> I swear to God, if they put fucking Ray in this shit where Ray shows up, I'm fucking out. I'm out. I'll be like, nope. Fuck you. I'm done. I swear to God. <laughs> Weird or Snoke or some fucking weird ass dude will show up. Um, I don't know. Cause I don't know if that will try dark side users either. I don't know. I don't know what they're planning on doing with the show whatsoever. The dark troopers, where I thought they were supposed to be like force enhanced, or actually they look like just robots. So yeah. I don't know. Um, I know it's kind of a long video. I want to thank you all if you sat around and watched. Oh, by the way, before it ends, uh, so Buff, Buff Fett swears that he's going to keep helping him. That the deal was that Mando, that Mando, he got his honor back, but they would protect the Mando, Mandalorian and the child. They failed to protect the child, so they're going to continue to go until the child is returned. So Boba Fett swears to, to follow him. So they go back to, um, God, what was that world? It was the one where they always go back to. And he sits down with Gina Carano's character, Cara Dune. And she's now officially the Republic's, um, think of her a sheriff, a marshal. So now she's an actual official marshal, so she's got to follow these rules and stuff. Hey, uh, Mando says, hey, I need to do a favor. I need you to look up an Imperial prisoner. His name is Blah Blah Blah. It's the sharpshooter from the from the first season. I need to get him, and I need him to help me locate, you know, uh, Marth, um, whatever his name is, ship. And she goes, well, I, I'd love to help you, you know, help you out, but I can't. I have to follow these rules now. And it's just like, as much as I don't want to. And he's like, well, they got the child. And she goes, what? <laughs> they kept 
child. So now my guess is she's going to break a bunch of rules to help it. Um, maybe even contact the rebellion. Be like, hey, or the New Republic. Be like, hey, we have tags on the this moss. Gideon, that's the name of Mar Moss Gideon. And we're going to, you know, track him down. Maybe the, the, uh, the New Republic is going to send in people to help him out. Track down this moth to try to destroy whatever he's trying to do. I don't know. We'll see what happens in the next episode. It does leave you off of wondering where they're going. Because there's only two episodes left. So they got to wrap this up in two episodes. My guess is the next episode is going to be him getting all those people together. And them trying to track down Moth Gideon. They're probably going to finally track him down. And in my guess, the last episode is going to be like this massive battle between um, his people and Moth Gideon's people. And my ultimate guess at the end is Mando's going to end up killing Moth Gideon with the spear and taking the saber back. Once that happens... Um, I don't know. Maybe he'll give it to Boba Fett, and Boba Fett will claim himself the new Mando, or Ma the new Mandalorian leader. <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. So, yeah. And I'm wondering if they're going to do another, uh, maybe they're going to wait till third season and have the Jedi show up. And it could be I don't know. <laughs> it's a lot of Clone Wars people, so I'm guessing it's going to be Ezra that's going to show up. That's my main guess. And he's going to appear finally. And he's going to be older. And he's going to be like, hey, you know, I, I, I saw the beacon. I felt it. I've come to take the child. And then, I don't know. Maybe it's an Ezra show. I don't know. I don't know, guys, but that's what I have my feelings on. Um, I said it's 6 out of 10. I did have some problems with it, as I explained. But most of the show is pretty good. And it's some cool action. Boba Fett kicked ass again. And so it, it was definitely like Boba Fett just coming in, kicking everybody's ass, going, hey, give me my fucking armor, bitch. Oh, okay. Here's my armor. All right, now I can kick some real ass. <laughs> and he looks a lot better than the other dude who wore it way better i'm sorry to say this the guy from the first episode you're way too thin fucking this dude when he wears his armor fucking looks like it deserves his armor he looks like a badass he's got the fucking build for he's got the shoulder build for he's got the arms you just feel like that armor was meant for him and there you go so thank you for stopping by thank you for watching this video if you've watched till now thank you please like share subscribe if you haven't subscribed, as I said before, please hit the subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It's just a click. You get, every once in a while, you can see all my new videos that I'm coming out with come up. Um, by the way, a new announcement real quick. My brother, my real life brother, will be joining this channel as gaming streams. He'll be on my, my Twitch and my YouTube channel. I just got him set up with it. Now we're just planning on what games he wants to play what he wants to do live, when he wants to do it live, so on and so forth. So look forward to seeing him uh, start playing some games with you guys. And as soon as I get my computer in and I get a hold of at and and get them to do better internet, um, I will also be gaming. I plan on doing game. My first game I plan on really doing live is Cyberpunk. I'll be a little late because everybody's waiting for it to first release and they'll be streaming it right off the bat. Mine will probably start around Christmassy time when I can finally start streaming it. I hope so. Thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, it's a lot of fun, and I look forward to seeing you next time in the Mirror Sphere. See ya.